The wisdom of Kabbalah originated in ancient Babylon, where people discovered it for the first time. It talks about the foundations of the universe, of the world, and um, thus far, only very few people have engaged in it through the generations, but it's been around for four and a half thousand years. But now it is evolving and emerging because now we need this wisdom. And because it was hidden and closed all those years, around it, all kinds of beliefs and incorrect rumors were made about it, all kinds of misconceptions. But the wisdom of Kabbalah is a science about our lives, about the universe, about the world. And because it was hidden for so many years, people thought that it was about mysticism or all kinds of magic. All kinds of misconceptions. In the wisdom of Kabbalah, there is a knowledge about the whole of the universe, as I said. Currently, it is taught in 1800 faculties worldwide in universities. I myself did my PhD in philosophy and Kabbalah, and I have many students who study in universities who are also doing PhDs in that. It is not uh, the red bracelet or holy water Kabbalah, type of Kabbalah, or the celebrity type. Uh, it's totally not that. It is incorrect. Kabbalah is a very serious, um, rigorous science. And in our organization, we have many uh, scientists from all so fields of science, psychology, physics, medicine, etc. And as of late, politicians too and uh, economists, because the recent crisis actually demands of us to provide an answer why this is happening from the Kabbalah perspective and how it can be resolved. Kabbalah says that we are in an enclosed nature. We are under one law, and the whole of humanity is like one family. And we need to get along as members of the same family. And the current crisis is revealing that picture to us. And Kabbalah therefore explains how we should build ourselves, our relationships. It explains about the laws that, are, that exist in the whole of nature, how we can implement them, how we can achieve harmony among ourselves and with the whole of nature. And the wisdom of Kabbalah explains that human evolution comes through um, augmentation of the ego from generation to generation, and the still vegetative inanimate, the inanimate, the vegetative inanimate in nature, their egos don't increase, don't augment over time, but human beings from generation to generation constantly, their egos constantly grow, even through their one's personal life. Hence, we're changing our technologies, our societies. We're changing the world around us. And it's all because the augmentation of the ego. But now we're in a situation that our ego has become so overblown that it's become global, integral. And that forces us to understand that we have this reciprocal relation between us and we have to find the right, the, a new kind of order between us, not based solely on competitive and exploitation, but also how to connect correctly with each other. Otherwise, we'll destroy the world. And as for the conception of God in the wisdom of Kabbalah, by engaging in Kabbalah, we begin to see matter as transparent. We begin to see the forces that exist around our universe, how they govern the universe, how they manage it. It's a lot like an embroidery, a picture of an embroidery 
where on the one side of it you see the picture itself and on the other side you see the threads that create the picture. So what Kabbalah does is it enables us to see those threads, those forces that create the picture of the world and how we can, using this knowledge, tie the picture in the correct way. Because what's happening today is that we touch certain places in the world, but we don't know why we get the wrong kind of feedback in other places. That's why when Kabbalah reveals the picture of the world to us, it positions a person opposite nature in a very realistic manner and helps us maintain our cor correct sort of life. If people knew today what Kabbalah uh, suggests we would not be in this current crisis or in previous crises. We have a crisis in education, in culture, in family life, there are divorce rates that are soaring, children leaving home, depression rates are soaring too, a drug abuse, the terrorism and global terrorism, all these problems are because we don't feel the world. In other words, how, what nature wants of us. That's why today Kabbalah is emerging in, as a means to explain that, so we can conduct a life of harmony among ourselves. It's not quite that. With meditation, a person doesn't really know what he's looking for. He tries to kind of defocus his concentration and basically will kind of float in whatever state he's in. Here it is the opposite. Kabbalah has very specific accurate definitions of how you should kind of focus your mind so you penetrate matter, so you begin to feel the forces. The forces that stand behind our matter, those are forces of love and bestowal, forces of bonding and unity. So before a person bonds with these forces, he should work on himself, elevate himself above his ego. And there are special exercises to do. Those relate to the environment that you have to build, uh, an environment that increases your the importance of rising above one's ego, that you have to start considering and appreciating being considerate to others, so you reach or achieve this, this rule that is that, that is uh, in every faith, which is love their friend, their neighbor as their self. Well, in terms of applications, that's very simple, and it applies to everything that we have in this world. First of all, by studying the force that exists around our world, which is this kind of conclusive or inclusive force of nature, which is what we call God, but it's actually um, it's a physical nature um, force, but one that is higher than our own nature, because it is all about love and giving, and that's why we don't feel it, because we're opposite from it. But when we begin to come closer in our nature to that, and that's what Kabbalah teaches us, then we begin to employ that power on ourselves. It gives us a chance to permeate. Uh, to permeate it, and, and, and then it's expressed in all of our actions, in the family, in education of children, in the way we perform our jobs. 
um, and in the professions that we study too. Because, and I learned a lot of things through it because we learn how this force kind of dresses in matter, how it acts in the inanimate, in the plants, in animals, in people. It helps us understand all of life systems, uh, political systems, economical systems, uh, psychological ones, human relations, family relations, how to have a better education, where culture comes from. Say now, for example, now in my current visit to New York, I've met with psychologists, musicians. Just today we met Moby. Um, politicians, and people who really engage in every area of human engagement. And I, I find that I have a lot to talk to them about, and I see that they, I've got something to, to, to say to them, and they have something to add to me. And with my experience in all the places in the world that I've come to and engage with people, we later on have a lot of work um, with all with people from all walks of life and, and fields of expertise. This comprehensive knowledge about the force of nature, which Kabbalah adds to us, we can add it. It's like a spice that you add to every way of life, and especially to education. Because our problem is that if we could educate just a single generation in the right way, they would educate their own kids correctly in the right, in the right way. And Kabbalah explains how we can approach education in a way that brings them up as good people. And I'm very happy that actually precisely because of the current crisis that is affecting the whole world, people are finally beginning to, to, to be more attentive and to understand that the main problem is human education, to stop using our egos so wildly. Um, like, for example, the financiers and all those who are both. And I can see that it produces good results, actually. Let's hope that we will see our children and grandchildren having a better life as a result. Well, of course, our whole world should behave Basically, as it does, you just have to add a few corrections to it. Kabbalah says that before we have now come into this state in the evolution of our egos over the generations, now that we've, we've evolved to a state where we're all kind of closed in together, it's like cogwheels all tied together, working together. And that's the state of the whole world right now. And it'll even it'll be even more so. So as we need to learn what is a cybernetic closed system. What kind of laws apply, apply in it? By which formula we have to manage our lives right now? The result is, and that was my first profession, biocybernetics. In such a system, you cannot succeed if you have no consideration of the entire system. But how can I be considerate of 7 billion people? It's very simple. What we learn from the science of systems, biocybernetics, and from the wisdom of Kabbalah, you have a very simple formula. Every person, every business in the world, from this day onwards, can succeed only on condition that it works without any surplus uh, profit. Only what it needs to sustain itself in a kind of normal way. Only in this way can we move forward.
I'm hopeful that at one time economists will understand it, and especially those who are in business, just because they won't have a choice, because either we learn it out of troubles and, and crises, or we will see, using science and Kabbalah, both of which speak of the same thing. But there's a very basic, simple formula. You have a business, you got to pay your employees, you got to pay your insurance, you got to um, pay your own uh, salary, you got to pay for pension and for holiday and for whatnot and for vacations. But that's it. Not more than that. Leaving nothing that is surplus profits. The rest will come back to you in a negative way. That's the law of closed systems, which humanity today is kind of um, emerging into. And we're going to have to learn it in the coming years, and let's hope we learn it not out of troubles, but just by attaining it, perceiving it. Well, of course, Kabbalah teaches us how we can approach world peace, and there's a big problem here that we need to teach the whole of humanity that the connection between us is something that comes out of nature. In other words, it is not something we can detach. It is not something that we can control. Uh, we can't control each other by force. We're going to have to find a, a mutual solution here. Uh, we're talking about the Middle East, for example. Both sides will have to understand the conclusive picture of the world, and that harmony between those parties is the only solution, and nothing else. It is even written in the book of Zohar, the, the fundamental book of Kabbalah, which was written 2,000 years ago, that in our generation, around the year 2000, using the wisdom of Kabbalah as we discover the picture of the world to Jews and to Arabs, through it we will come to an understanding, to a mutual understanding of how we can get along and achieve peace. Let's hope it will help not only to the Middle East but uh, to the whole world. There is plenty of trouble. Uh, in South America, uh, in a, uh, with Iran and other countries. And in general, people need to see the real picture of the world. So that will compel them to, to behave in the right way, conduct themselves in the right way. Until a person sees how the whole world is kind of round, in other words, interconnected, and is placed under very deterministic laws of nature, he thinks that you know, with our, with our foolishness or our um, blindness, we think that with our egos we can be triumphant. But when you see these forces and you feel their power, you're left with no with nothing else to do but go along with them. So I'm truly hopeful that through the emergence of Kabbalah, which is what we're doing, uh, we will achieve peace and perfect perfection world the world over. All religions and all belief systems all kinds of esoterics and mysticism stem from the fact that a person doesn't see the world. If the whole world had been open to us and we could see the full picture of what is happening, there would be no room for, for blind faith or for religion. Everything would be visible. And that's why we need to realize the wisdom of Kabbalah, to implement it, because it leaves nothing closed, unseen, 
or miscomprehend, uh, comprehended. It makes you understand everything and be able to use everything. And that elevates us really to the degree of God, meaning to the highest degree of nature. As it is actually written in the Bible, they shall all know me from the least of them on to the greatest of them. In other words, it's about knowing this higher force, the force of God. And that's what people need, every person. And then we will not make mistakes and we won't be able to make mistakes. Mm -hmm.